You're listening to TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. We're your hosts. I'm Kate. And I'm Nicole. And this is our show where, you know what? Let's do something a little different. Welcome to TG1F's Read an F1 Romance Novel Month. F1 Romance, author interviews, book recommendations, oh my. Join us for a month-long celebration of F1 Romance authors and the stories that get our hearts racing. Because while F1 drivers are filling their shelves with trophies, we're filling yours with F1 Romance novels. Who are we talking to today, Kate? Turn the page and find out. Welcome to the show, Parveen. Thank you so much for being here. We're very excited to chat with you today, learn more about your book. So let's kind of kick it off. Tell us about, tell the listeners, tell anyone who's who's watching this maybe on YouTube uh, about your F1 novel. Give us a little bit of a synopsis. Um, okay, so my this is like the first book in the series that I've created. It's called the Off the Grid series. The first book is called The Moon Off Track. It's going to be like a four part series. So they're all interconnected. So you can read it as a standalone. Um, so the first book, it goes into the world of Formula One, of course includes like the contemporary romance against like Pakistani culture um, and both characters mm. are from Pakistan but British so I wanted to include that like representation in the book the story it captures so it captures the difficulties and triumphs between these two characters whilst dealing with their own problems so Farah she's the female character she's a female lead and she's a determined physiotherapist who's always wanted to work in this whole like Formula One world and wanted to work specifically with the team that Azar Shah is in. So he's the male lead and he's he's like a well-known Formula One driver. He's going to earn his like sixth championship um, in the novel and she wants to work with him. However, like it doesn't go all smooth, obviously. Um, so... Uh they do have like a bit of a friction between each other through in the beginning of the book um but throughout you like you'll see how they'll understand each other and how similar their problems are um which is why they kind of fall in love with each other and become friends and they kind of solve each other's issues and be there for each other um in the book i kind of focus on themes of like mental health um i feel like that was really important because of course, in the real world, like Formula One drivers, they do have mental health issues. And I know it's not much like talked about much it's like for me as well. I've gone through mental health issues. So I thought it would be so good to include that and make sure un- readers understand that it's not all like, like, you know, rainbows in the Formula One world. Also talking about female empowerment. That's really mm-hmm. important. I showed that Farah is she can stand up for herself. Um, And she doesn't need to like listen to what her family disapproved of or she doesn't even necessarily have to listen to Azar who's kind of her boss because she's his physiotherapist. So she kind of stands her ground and does what she wants to do and speaks and defends herself when she has to. Themes about like family dynamics, that's really important and that's a part of why I've included the Desi like representation. Um, So it's got like you know, a blend of tradition and then like the modern world. So those are like important themes that are really important for this like first book of the series. More about the characters. So Azar, he he's this like, you know, rebel. He's He doesn't really care about anything. He only cares about racing. He cares about his money and just everything about that. And he wants to win all the time. Uh, but when he meets Farah, he kind of forgets about like, the money side or he almost doesn't think that racing is just part of his life and she makes him realize that you know it's okay to break down and kind of talk about other issues that he's built up throughout the novel and that's similar with Farah as well she they've both had like family disapproval so with Azza his father didn't want him to like go into this racing career and Farah, her family, didn't want her to go into this, like, physiotherapy, like, going to the Formula One world um, in the novel. And they care about more, like, reputation and, like, status and all of that kind of themes. Um, so they kind of explore that within the novel and they they try to push those issues away, work towards, like, that it's okay to go through, like, your own path, like, dreams and 
it's okay to not listen to what your parents like their parents wanted them to do um there's also like themes of like culture as well so they do like end up going to pakistan um and i kind of show like what's the traditions and the culture in like the country and then yeah they kind of like fall in love and um it's like a happy ending for them as for spice i felt like it wasn't necessary for me to include spice in this novel specifically um i feel like just their like moments of like understanding and them having like obviously there's like cute moments in the novel that i've written so it wasn't necessary for me to actually add that extra spice into the novel yeah um and i also think that's what makes a book yeah. good as well just like if it had spice in it because it was a uh, desi representation yeah. and pakistani like culture and tradition i felt like it was just not necessary to put it in there's emotional spice they're connecting they're connecting emotionally and with their hearts that's where the spice is Sometimes I read books and I don't even care about the spice. I'm like, let me know more about the relationship. Like, I don't care. Yes. I want to know yes. about their physical. I want to know about their emotional intimacy. Leave me alone. I love that. So, can you tell us a little more about about the female main character and kind of her storyline throughout this novel and kind of the emotional journey? So, um, Farah, she's like this quiet, reserved girl like she's just always focused on work and before she actually joins this f1 team and becomes a physiotherapist for Azza, she had like her own clinic and she used to like work with other clients but then when she gets this opportunity she wanted to like go for it but in the back of her mind she had that thought that oh her family's gonna disapprove of her and that's what happened because they care about reputation they cared about what people would think and that's really common for like females in Desi representations, they only think about what their parents think. Like they have that Mm -hmm. thought that, oh, they're gonna shame them. So she's, in the novel, she kind of faces that disapproval with her family and she's kind of got left out in the family. She tends to like overthink about it a lot in the novel. Um, And she's got this desire to feel loved and accepted of co- obviously when yeah. she, cause she hasn't been uh, accepted by her family. So she's yeah. worked all her life to get this opportunity and she goes for it. And now it's, it's important because like, she is a bit of me. I've kind of put like her personality and stuff is kind of from what, how I go about in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, and she kind of gets that pressure from her family and societal expectations that weigh heavily on her shoulder and she's trying to navigate her way to get past that and just be herself through like through the character I wanted to show that you know people if you're going through something similar you're not alone and she realizes that in the novel when she gets to know Azar and when she meets other certain characters in the novel you realize that you're not alone and you don't need to struggle alone with these kind of problems and you can like carve out a path where you both like you honor both your aspirations and how you can honor like your family or your heritage or your culture and that's why I wanted to show in her character specifically and importantly her story is more about like it's a celebration of how she had courage to go and do this without thinking about later on and so without thinking about her family or about this disapproval and it's I think that's really important in the story um that you can go on about your dreams and actually fulfill them I love that she sounds like an amazing female lead and I personally can't wait to read the book it sounds so inspiring as you're talking I'm like wow sounds a lot like me personally (laughs) so (laughs) I can't wait to connect with her on a more personal level so switching gears a little bit how did you originally get into formula one and become a fan i think everything started in covid um i was obviously we were in lockdown and we had i had nothing to do i was at that time i was still in like high school and uh, schools were closed and i knew my brother used to watch it a lot during covid and he was really into formula one at that time and I was just like, one day I just sat down with him and I watched the race. It was the um, Im- Imola race. Um, and I sat down okay. and watched it with him. And then 
the moment I think it was when the end of the race and Daniel Ricciardo came third I think and when I saw him do his shoey I was like I'm invested in this like I want to watch more of this like <laughs> the race so I kind of got into it because of I mean my brother but also watching that race specifically and then I did like my research I watched like previous races and I like now I'm just like a really huge fan of it um I even went to one of the races I went to the 2021 Abu Dhabi race Max and Lewis mm. <laughs> it was crazy that day oh my gosh oh my gosh I can't even imagine what actually being there would have been surrounded by Max fans like literally I was like the o- probably the only one that was sporting Lewis in, in that race and everyone around me was just like full of like in orange t-shirts oh my gosh and that was your first race you'd been to yeah I mean, how do you top that? How do you ever top that? That's like the ultimate first race to go to. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's incredible. So when was like kind of that aha moment that you were like, I'm writing a book about this sport? Did you already have these characters and you thought Formula One would be the right place to place them? Or were you thinking that you wanted to write a book about Formula One and the kind of characters came to you? Like, what was that moment like? Um, I th- so it all pretty much started last year. Um, I mean, I've always been into writing. Like, I always used to write, like, romance novels. But I never really generally focused on, like, F1. And until last year, it, you know, I was just working, like, with these characters as Amphara. And I didn't, at the beginning, I didn't think to actually make it into a F1 romance novel. Um, and I was just doing, like, my research. I was thinking, like, what could the male lead like have like what his role could be like what his job or career and then it just occurred to me like you know I love Formula One why don't we make him a driver because I know the knowledge about Formula One the races that you know the tools and techniques and everything I was like I can just make him a driver and that's why I did I did do some more research I looked at you know like specific races that could be you know inspired for the book also because last year I was going through some like mental health issues and writing was like my only escape and watching formula one so i kind of thought you know just put the two together and see how it goes and it actually you know took my mind off everything and i was just so invested in writing this novel um and i actually enjoyed it probably more than the other novels that i've written so far especially writing the races and stuff because the excitement as watching it as writing is just kind of the same thing you know so I know you pulled in, you said, you mentioned you pulled a little bit of inspiration for Farah from yourself, um, but were there any inspirations from the current F1 grid that you pulled into uh, any other characters in this series? I would say as a mainly, I kind of took him like personality wise and, you know, appearance and stuff from like Lewis. When I was when I watched Lewis, I can like I could have like imagined him like as a driver in like a book, but obviously like one of my own. And as I was kind of like perfect for that, when I was making up this character, I realized some some of the traits that he had matched with Lewis. For example, like he's this determined driver who wants to come like overcome these challenges. And we've seen like with Lewis, he's overcoming these challenges in the past like two years with not having like a good car yeah. but um and that's what I saw with Azar when I was writing or planning out this novel that he wanted to overcome the challenges that he was going through whether it was on track or off track he was he just wanted to win like with Lewis he's always got that drive or that thought in his head that he wants to win that's what I found with Azar that he would do anything to win even if his car yeah. was bad or good or if his team was bad, he wanted to win. And I found that that was quite similar with Lewis. Yeah. I mean, Lewis Hamilton is absolutely a romance novel main character. Like, that was a man written by a woman 100%. So <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to me. So kind of a general question as an author, but like, what is your favorite trope to write? And on the other side, what is a trope that you haven't written yet that you really would like to find a way to write about? Um, so my favorite trope, I think, is the forbidden trope. I love writing that trope. I think, so obviously in this book, it's kind of 
forbidden like there's a forbidden trope between like how he's a driver and she's his physiotherapist so there's obviously that professional boundary between them two um but also between like their families they don't really approve because obviously they've gone through their issues with their families they there's that still disapproval but so in a way that was I enjoyed writing that because with the forbidden trope you can kind of see that the intense emotions between the two characters and I love writing about that because you can see how they attract towards each other but also how they like face challenges and have that respect and understanding and I can like really go in depth with that when it's forbidden yeah so I love writing the forbidden trope um one trope that I would love to go into probably like marriage of convenience I've been like researching it and I really want to write a novel that is based on that and kind of have like an enemies to lovers kind of mixed into it and like in a workplace setting as well. I think that would be really cool and fun to write. Oh, she's mixing all three. <laughs> are any of your upcoming, I know you said you have uh, a couple in this series, like are any uh, going to be that trope, do you think? Um, Not really. I mean, the second book that I've written, um, it's more like a second chance romance. And that was something that I did want to write, but I've already written it for the second book. <laughs> and... Again, it's almost got that forbidden relationship because the female lead in that book, she's the daughter of the of the male's rival team's principal, if that makes sense. So like they've got, got it. Yep. so they've got that forbidden like kind of relationship. Like they've got like this secret relationship that no one knows that they're in a relationship. Um, but then eventually it gets out. Like her father doesn't approve of it because obviously she's dating the driver from like the rival team um again but this novel like the second book is more about like redemption and second chances and also there's like secret pregnancy pregnancy in this novel as well um so i think it's probably like the best one that i've written so far um and i'm excited to like share it with everyone and publish it i love that all right let's get into a few rapid fire questions here uh, so who is your favorite F1 team and who's your favorite driver? I think we can maybe guess, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> team would have to be Mercedes and favorite driver, it's Lewis and Daniel. Like, I can't choose between them two. Like, I have to say both. What are you going to do when Lewis is at uh, Ferrari next year? I was literally thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, he's going into Ferrari next year. Like, do I change teams or do I like stick with Mercedes? <laughs> But I'll always be like a Lewis fan, like no matter what team you come over to the Ferrari side. The water's fine. We're happy to have you. I love Charles and Carlos, but I don't know if I like like the team. You know, like just the team itself. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, the same. <laughs> uh, they're my favorite team, and I still am like, do I actually like them? I don't know. Not this season. Not last season. Not recently. <laughs> okay, so stepping outside of F one a little bit. What is your current favorite non-F1 book or series that you've read lately? Um, Non-F1 book um, would have to... Be, I've started reading Icebreaker. It's a hockey romance. Mm. I've never been into like hockey romance ever. And I started reading that because I was recommended it. And I've actually enjoyed like reading it. And I think I'm going to get like the next book. And I feel like that one really... I feel like that was kind of the first one that sparked this wave of like sports romance books, people's obsession. Like, I feel like that came yeah. onto the scene and then everyone was like, I need to read every sports romance book that's ever been written. <laughs> it was a good one because it was like, I, I, I don't know anything about hockey. Like I, I, I understand the concept of hockey, obviously. Like I'm like, okay, they, there's a puck on, on the ice and you're ice skating and you get the puck in the goal. I get it. But I like don't actually know any of the rules outside of that. So, but I feel like that book was good because you didn't necessarily need to know. Like it was more about like the relationship than like the it was that was just like what they did and it, they were connecting over like ice skating, but I was that was a good one cuz I was like, okay, I feel like I can read this knowing nothing about hockey. That's that's a good recommendation. All right, if you are you familiar with the concept of the amazing race? I've actually never seen it, so I wouldn't know. 
Okay, well, the premise is is that you and a partner go on this, you know, competition show where you're competing against other two subs, traveling across the world, competing in challenges. Some of them are mental, some of them are physical. You have your passport, and you have a limited amount of money, and you have to get from point A to point B every week. And so with that premise in mind... If you were on The Amazing Race and you had to pick one of your characters that you wrote to be your partner on this journey, who would you pick? I would pick, I, you know, I wouldn't pick, I'd make as I'll be my partner. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he'd it's be- It's not like, an app. Yeah, like I feel You're like he'd be good at it. You're being told <laughs> that he's your partner. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he'd be good at, good at it and I'd, I'll make him do all the work, to be honest. <laughs> You know what? That's fair. We always, we've been asking a lot of people this and they're like, oh, you know, they've been, some of them have been picking their, their driver characters and we're like, well, the number one best, uh, reason for that is that they can drive stick and you do need that on the amazing race. And that's something that neither Kate and I know how to do. So yeah, one of us has to bite the bullet and, and figure it out if we're ever going to realize our dreams of going on the amazing race. (laughs) We'll, th- we'll uh, get thrown into the deep end and figure it out real quick, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Parveen, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love chatting with you. We loved hearing more about your books and, and your process and your wonderful main character. So I know Kate and I can't wait to check out your books. And I hope our readers are currently adding to their list right now. But you know, I'm going to hand it over to you. Where can our listeners find your book? Where can they find you on the internet? Uh, what do you have coming up? Give us the whole spiel. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It was, it's a love. It was like a good opportunity for me to come on here and talk to you guys. Um, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. Um, author Parveen B. That's the username. Um, Instagram, I'm mainly active on there. I'll I'll, I'm posting like updates and posts about the books. Um, upcoming stuff that I've got is like I talked about book two that I'm working on. Um, currently editing that, so I hope to have that published by winter. So keep an eye an eye out for that. But also I'm working on thing like really non F one. I'm working on a dark romance series as well. So keep a watch out for that Ooh. as well. Thank you so much. I know this is the first time we're chatting like this, but I certainly know it won't be the last. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. If you like what you heard, don't miss out on the fun between episodes. Keep up with the chaos on Instagram at two girls, one formula. That's spelled out T-W-O girls numerical one formula and check out our website two girls one formula.com to shop cute fan-made f1 merch see you next week but like we said in the meantime we'll see you on the internet